4,400. Okay. With the stage, our main ballroom should seat about 3,000. Okay. Our facility will hold 6,000. All right. Thank you. Which, um, okay. Uh, so, uh, next we have uh, a question for everybody as to what is the state of your filing? Is it already done? Or if not, when do you anticipate to file? We filed and were accepted this morning. Has he has not yet filed? We will file well ahead of the deadline. Um, we have not filed yet, but we are pre um, pretty close to completing the, the file. So um, we'll, we are expecting to file in by the end of this year. We haven't filed yet. We will file before the deadline. The follow-up question behind that for all four bids is uh, please give us the best answer you can about who your chairman will be if you are selected. Wawa has voted that should we be selected, Michael and I will continue as co-chairman. Um, with regard to Helsinki, we are still in discussion about this, so not answering at this moment. We'll have a very, very fine chairman or men or women or platter pie. <laughs> about our chairs yet. Um, we are in, still in discussions and we are trying to get more experienced people on our um, PT3 um, for our convention if we win. Um, it will be myself, Robbie Bourget, and Terry Fon. Thank you. Hey. <laughs> um, so the next question that I have uh, for all four, all, all four bidders, is there any thoughts to theme of your convention should you be selected? We have not yet discussed a potential theme. Someone else second. What are we doing? Oh, Alphabetical. Um, no, we don't have a set theme yet, but as I mentioned in the presentation, Bringing in world into Worldcon is an important thing for us. You might call it a theme, we might call it a theme, we don't quite know that yet. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. Uh, sorry, my bad, two more. Okay. Um, our theme is to be international, to interact with the world. We have lots of little ideas, but we don't have an overarching theme right at the moment. We'll announce it when we get it. Okay. That is all for it. All right. Um, moving on to a theme for, or to a question for just the uh, bids from outside of uh, the United States. So that means, Warren, you're off the hook, but don't think this you're getting off easy. Um, the question is, uh, recently LundCon had a very successful outside of the North America WorldCon. Uh, the, the largest Worldcon ever, um, and possibly I mean, way up there. However, uh, is not uh, going to be passing. Has also said that they're not going to be passing along anything more than nominal funds to the to the people after because of the finances of running in London, uh, which for the folks who didn't understand were very scary, and it was amazing that we got to do what we did. Thank you, London. But what do you know of your potential finances running outside of the United States as it affects you? Do you? anticipate uh, being able to pass along if should you participate in pass along by the way that question is coming next um, you know in anything more than a nominal form of course we expect to make a some number of positive end result but not too big because that would be wasting our members money um, we believe we have a very good uh, relationship with our facilities and we believe that building a Worldcon in Helsinki is not as expensive, for example, as in London. Because we're in Helsinki. Um, <laughs> so I think overall my answer to that is yes. Um, honest, honestly, to say that um, Japan is also a very costive, um, very expensive place to hold a convention like in London but 
Shizuoka is fairly um, cheap and reasonable compared to Tokyo, Yokohama. So we think we could get some surplus and pass along the funds. And we also have uh, great support from the Shizuoka Convention and Tourism Board, and we are hoping to get some financial back backups from them. So we are hoping to get these, uh, the, the funds from the city and from the prefecture and we are seeking to um, get some funds out from our governments so we are hoping to get a surplus and pass it along to the future world comes. Okay, um, as with anticipation and because of the 150th anniversary, we expect that we will have much more resources at our fingertips, which means any monies we raise will go more directly towards the convention and not the facilities, as is usual for a Worldcon. Montreal looks at what we do as applies to the past and future. We believe in nurturing fandom, and as we did in 2009, we participated in Pass Along, as well as contributing to other Worldcons that were not within our Pass Along window, so we expect that to continue. Uh, since uh, DC got off scot-free, they get the next one all by themselves. Um, in the presentation, uh, you mentioned the uh, convention space was 195,000 square feet. Did I hear that correct? Yes, that was correct. Okay. 195,000 square feet, sorry. I, I, I chopped off three orders of magnitude right there. That was awesome. Um, so 195 square feet is clearly too small. But, but but uh, but 195,000 square feet is also not on the high end of what we've used before. Are you planning Are you planning on supplementing that in any way with space from hotels, or is really that what you're what you're throwing your facility your convention in? That number does not include every bit of pre-function in the hotel. That is the exhibits and the function rooms themselves. So we do believe that given the advantageous layout of the hotel, that should be sufficient to our needs. So you're answering that you're also that some of the program and, and events will also be in the hotel as well as the convention center? There is no convention center. It's all in the hotel. hotel. My bad. <laughs> okay. No, like Chicago. There we go. <laughs> That's enough about that if you want to hold it. Okay. Um, the next question uh, we have is for Nippon. Um, the FAQ lists the closest hotel uh, is four kilometers from the convention site, uh, connected by, by train. Um, it lists that other hotels are walking distance from that train site. The question is how far of walking distance? Like, in minutes how far to walk from the hotel to the train site and those slightly further away hotels how long total would it be to get from them to the convention center um the our main convention hotels are right in front of the station so it's like 30 seconds from the station and the other hotels they are in within the i think the far farthest the farthest hotel should might be take about 15 minutes walk but most of the hotels are within 10 minutes walk. Uh, one more question for Japan. Uh, the prior Worldcon in Japan, uh, Nippon 2007, uh, was the first convention Worldcon in Japan, and as part of running it, came, uh, so did not suffer a financial loss. Uh, so the question is, uh, what steps are you taking to uh, adjust is by size or learning from what happened to try to make sure that that does not happen again. Yes, um, so that's why we've chosen Shizuoka instead of Yokohama because Yokohama is so expensive so that if we have the same size of the, uh, the, the members of 2007 then we will not, you know, it, it will, we will not pay off. So we thought we, we will need to find a good place which is hard, um, it cost about half half of Yokohama. So I think I we believe that Shizuoka is a very good place because um, we can more focus on more facilities than we actually didn't have much cost for facilities at Yokohama because the site itself was so expensive. So we we think 
we will be able to, um, we've learned that how many members would come to WorldCon because at the first time we didn't even know the estimate numbers of the members that we sh should come over to Japan. But we had, we already have that number so we can calculate <coughs> from okay. the numbers. I, I, thank you. Um, and a final question for Japan before we move to the double jeopardy round. Um, the, the, since the connection to the hotels is by train, how late does that train run? Um, it's, it runs every 15 minutes, so, and in the peak time, it runs in every 7 minutes. So, so it runs 24 hours a day? Oh uh, no, um, it starts from 5 a.m. I think, 5 a.m. to 23 um, 11 p.m. 11 p.m.? Okay, thank you. Right. So now we move to, to double jeopardy. Um, I'm going to ask Doug Geisler and Vince uh, Doherty to come up here with me. We're going to do something that might fall flat on its face, but take some paper and a pen, hand some down to the next person. <laughs> Um, okay, so to explain to you what's going to happen and get rid of your wide-eyed stare, um, I'm going to ask the same three questions of all of you, but none of you are going to get the advantage of other people's answers. Um, so the, the people that go last don't get to cheese it and get the good answers from the people who came before you. Um, so, and you're going to get 30 seconds to write down your answer to each of these questions. Okay? So, question the first. Um, is what are your plans between now and the time of the vote to get ready to win the vote? What is your priority list of preparations for the next six months for your bid? Please answer that question. In how long an essay? <laughs> Whatever they can write down in 30 seconds because that's all they're getting. Dave, are you reading their answers? I, I will be reading their answers. They're not reading their answers. Thank you. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Okay. Next question. Should you win the vote? What is your priority list to get your convention going between the winning of your vote and your very first seated SMOFCON? Go. Five, four, three, two, one, stop. Okay, and the final question, and, and this question is going to be asked of all bidders going forward, and it's the self-reflection is difficult question. What do you believe is your greatest perceived failing of your bid, your greatest perceived n not bonus, and what are you doing to address it? 30 seconds, go. Give them every chance to answer these questions. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, go. Now, I'm going to read your answer, and Vince and, Vince and Deb are going to see if you've generated any follow-up questions. The best, the best thing that will happen is nothing. <laughs> However, you might get more questions in a minute. I will start with Helsinki, because they are closest to me. 
Um, so the question was, what are you doing for the next few months to get ready to win? The answer is, get our bid presence everywhere and convention pre-organization. What are your priorities post-winning between the SMOFCOM, putting together a committee, and getting your presence everywhere? I sense a team. <laughs> uh, what is your greatest perceived challenge and what are you doing to address it? Cost of attendance. And the answer is it's not that expensive. Mm. Not sure about that. Okay. All right, moving on. Who's next? Japan. We have uh, what are you doing for the next uh, uh, until the vote to get ready to win? Putting together our committee structure and working on our budget. What are you doing uh, after the win, before your first SMOFCON? Advertising for members and recruiting overseas staff. And what's the greatest perceived failing? Uh, the Nippon 2007 loss, and the, to get it to address it is better budget uh, with cheaper facilities and working on that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so DC and 17, uh, what are you doing for the next few months to get ready for vote? Work with DC local fandom to build support and develop a clear convention plan. Appoint all DHs uh, and refine budget and timeline and begin. Sorry, that's right. Sorry. Uh, after the win, uh, up to the first SMOFCON, the plan is to get the DHs in place, uh, refine budget and timeline, and begin plans for special events and special items. Uh, and the greatest perceived threat and what they're doing about, or the greatest perceived failure and what they're doing about it, uh, lack of energy, and the, what they're doing to address it is further engaging the younger portions of the committee. Thank you for that. And Montreal. The, the, what they're doing for the next few months to get ready to win the vote. Uh, publicity, uh, recruitment, to, uh, recruitment to the cause, outreach, and grant applications. Uh, the, um, what they're doing post-win, uh, outreach to members, uh, fac uh, facilities preparations and uh, national, I'm, I can't read the words there, national consolidation, solidarity. national solidarity, that makes sense, you're, you're getting the whole, whole country together on your, on your convention, I can't, okay. And finally, uh, what's the greatest perceived, uh, per perceived weakness, uh, that we are uh, that we are partial to the U.S. and part of, part of the U.S. and the getting and what they're doing about it is get the message out that they are not and that our strength is our mosaic, the the wide variety of Canada. Thank you very much. Um, so at the moment, before I turn over to Vince and Ben, I have one follow-up question that's not a negative, but it's a follow-up question from what was said um, about uh, about uh, for Montreal. Um, with grant applications, uh, the question is, um, and this links back to uh, the, the previous Montreal Worldcon, uh, was there uh, government money that came into Montreal the, the last time, and if so, how did that get used? If there wasn't, why do you think you'll be successful now as opposed to before? approximately $75,000 in government grants. Uh, I feel that we would are, we're already in a better position than that. They've already uh, agreed to match at least that. How do we use it? How do we use it? Well, how do we use it? It's part of our general pass along and uh, part of our uh, overall surplus. All right, thank you. And I now pass over to uh, let you get your Greg your grade from Deb with any follow-up questions from her and then from Vince. Excuse us just a second. We'd like 
to drag this out. Or tension, or suspense, drama. You're just trying to increase bar. Sorry, what, what we're trying to do is, is uh, uh, sync up our questions for the um, bidders. Um, and, and I think we'd like to deal with this. Shut up, Andy. I think we'd like to deal with this one bit at a time, if that's okay. Because that way, y'all can sit down and relax and not have to freak. So, um, Helsinki went first, uh, at least in terms of how I wrote them down first. Um, so, could you tell us what is, you said uh, you would start, you, in, until the bit, until the vote, you would be doing convention pre-organization. What does that mean? <coughs> what, I, <coughs> what I meant with that quickly written down note is the fact that WellCon bid doesn't just suddenly turn into a convention. It, well, it does that, of course, yeah, but <laughs> there's, there's magic that happens, like, like being able to accept money on the following morning, uh, being able to announce guests of honor, being able to have things sorted out, like a budget to a sufficient degree that you have initial membership rates uh, that you can announce. All of that magic needs to be sorted out ahead of time. That's what I meant by con pre-organization. Okay, and you, you mentioned about your costs on the one hand being uh, not that expensive, but having to explain the real costs of a world con to you know, some of the people who are used to the relatively cheap uh, fin cons. What, what do you actually think your um, budget profile or your expenses are really going to be? How expensive a con is it going to be for you? You mean for, for members attending, or what do you mean? Well, both. Both. You know, is it going to be a regular Worldcon size budget, and is that going to translate into regular sized uh, memberships? The budget is going to end up being the highest Finnish convention budget ever. But we, we have years of history of knowing how to do conventions so they're not as expensive, but still have still are full conventions without really cutting the corners that make a convention a convention. But we also, in addition to um, getting money from our members, have in Finland a very good structure for getting cultural grants from a number of foundations. Parts of them are state funded, some are independently funded. This is a fundamental part of what makes it possible for Finnish conventions, for the most part, to be free membership. We, we have ways of finding money that don't tax our members. So we are hoping to be able to put together a welcome that for our members, members at least for, for the uh, cost of uh, what they pay to the convention, will be as low as possible. And we are furthermore in a position where the uh, convention center and the hotels that we are dealing with are separate entities and therefore uh, we can't really get a, a discount on the uh, convention space on account of having X amount of hotel nights. Therefore what we are negotiating with regarding the hotels is to just get the cheapest rates possible to make it the cheapest, uh, the, the, the least expensive experience for our members. Thank you. And we're done with you. <laughs> um, question, thank you. Question for the pawn. Um, and rec recognizing you, you've already answered the question around the, the change from uh, Yokohama to a cheaper facility, but one that's basically split. So, can you maybe amplify a little? Can, can you say more around? how the convention will actually feel in practice, because it sounds as though we're basically going to be in a convention center during the day, and they're commuting a distance, and everything else at night will be in the hotels. Can you say more about how you've thought to make that work in practice? <coughs> well, um, in Yokohama it was also the same, because we couldn't use the facility at night time, so 
at Yokohama, we used the convention center for the daytime and then moved to hotels and exhibition centers at the night time. So basically the idea is the same. So we run the programs at the convention center for the daytime and then we will we are planning to run a shuttle bus between the convention center to the main hotels, so direct from door to door. So um, that I think we think that will help. And uh, all the parties, all the um, night activities will be held in hotels. But uh, the Hugo ceremonies, they will be in, at the convention site. So basically, until the Hugos and all the ceremonies will be held at the convention center, and then with the shuttle bus. After the, uh, the or big ceremonies, we will run shuttle buses to back to the hotel, so everyone could be um, conveniently going back to their rooms. Thank you very much. We're done with Japan. <laughs> so, um, to the folks in DC. Um, one of the things that you said is that you see your, the perception of your biggest handicap as a lack of uh, energy, whereas people seeing that you have a lack of energy. Who are these people who don't think you have energy? And could you expand on that just a little bit? Because the answer didn't seem to make a lot of sense to us. Well, and yeah. Well, it's something that I've been, I've been trying to sort out exactly myself, but it's what I keep hearing. Uh, uh, well, Joseph Clary, for one, uh, and I, I tend to trust his opinion. So, I think that, you know, we, we may have stalled out a little bit on promotion in some areas. I for Montreal, we heard a lot about the uh, you know, the opportunity you're taking with the anniversary um, and of course the distinct Canadian and Quebec uh, culture. You, you talked about a mosaic rather than a, a, a blend or a merger, a melting pot. Can you say more about how that will be represented in the, uh, the convention should you win? Well, first of all, we will, as natural for Quebec, be bilingual. We also seek to incorporate as many languages as possible. Quebec has Somewhere, I believe, in, it's somewhere, I think, about 120 different languages or cultures involved, and we'd like to involve every single one of them. We'd like to eat at every single one of the restaurants as well. <laughs> when did we start? Oh. Sorry. Uh, did you catch that, or do I need to repeat it? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. So, so you just want to eat all the cultures. <laughs> Sharing food is the way that we bond. It's certainly not a bad way. You know, I mean, when I travel, one of the most mem strongest memories I have is what I ate. Yep. And Quebec, in particular, and Canada in general, tends to be a very food-based culture. It's how we talk, it's how we show we care for each other, it's how we communicate. Um, what other way is there? Well, actually, I know there are several other ways, but for us, it's quite important. Thank you very much, and with that we release you, and I release uh, Debbie Vincent, thank you so much for your service.